All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the week five of Risen Dominate Esports. I am Eldwis, and today I'm joined by my co-caster, uh, one of our new color casters, um, to help us out here in Risen, Hocus Focus. Hocus, how are you doing today? I am doing all right, sir. I am doing all right. All right. Wonderful. So originally we were supposed to have uh, Team 34, Rule 34, wonderful choice of name versus Pot of Greed. However, uh, due to scheduling conflicts, they are unable to play today. So we will have a replacement game with AFK, between AFK and Memes Aside. Now, uh, Memes Aside has already played on stream once today, but of course, we are always excited to bring them back, see what they they will bring for us this time, this week. Alright, and we will be going to draft soon. As the team's ready up, and as I say that, it seems that they are able, about to go into draft. Here we go. Alright. Uh, first ban, Alistair. Pretty standard ban. Nothing yeah, surprising coming out soon. Especially, yeah, especially now. Alistar is just so strong. Right. I haven't and been able to do a lot of research since the teams kind of uh, switched sides, so I'm not sure if any of these teams ban, are... My mistake, Ben, oh. was not locked in. A brand first ban. Um, not as um, not as expected, I have to say, but... Brand still yeah. very powerful since the last patch. Oh, yeah. Definitely is, and on top of that, I feel like it was probably targeted. Um, I'm sure somebody on memes aside plays brand in some capacity. Mm, for sure. In some capacity. Orin Band coming out for a memes aside for their first band, uh, followed by a Jax band from AFK. Now, um, what do you think? Do you think these are, once again, just bands for a flavor of a month, just power picks, or actual targeted champions? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, um, is Orn is a good band regardless. Um, Leona, she kind of fell off. Um, from the, I think it was the last patch. Um, so that might just be another main that we're seeing banned out. But the brand pick, I think, is definitely um, probably a support ban out. Uh, is very difficult to hang with in lane, especially early. Yeah, that's quite so. You know, um, we've seen in the uh, top lane... And of course, LCS, NA LCS, as everybody knows, uh, started back today. You also started back two days ago, and LCK started back, I believe, four days ago, if I'm correct. And I we have seen um, what top laners, the really powerful fighting top laners, can do when they're able to get ahead in lane. Now, uh, I'm sorry about that. We've missed the last two bands. Kane ban coming out from AK and Bane from Memes Aside. Vain, no explanation needed there. Right. Just a overall power pick. Probably the number one AD carry right now in the meta. Yep. But the Kane ban. Kane ban is just another one of those things. Is I personally, I don't ever want to play against Kane just because the the possibility of getting rolled over by him is so high. Um, but the Zaya AD carry pick is definitely one of the ones that mm. I would... Suggest right now, because like you were saying, Vayne's definitely number one pick for AD carry. I think Zaya's either number two or number three. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that yourself. Mm -hmm. No, I um I agree, you know. And the Rakan just shows how much they fear that Zaya Rakan lane, that potential of snowballing and, you know, just the end lane power. By yeah, and, too. yeah, it's the end. The power that they get from being combined, a lot of people probably... I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know or not, but they actually do get buffs if they're on the same side um, in regards to their abilities as well. Um, the Shivana pick is scary, um, but it's very solo queue in my opinion. Uh, she can carry really hard, but she needs to get ahead, um, which if they go for early ganks, she can definitely do, um, but she's more of a counter jungler in that regard. Oh my goodness. Well, you look at these picks coming out from AFK quite... I just have to be quite, quite confident uh, with themselves in the Zach pick. Um, Zach, uh, Zach pick, I'm sorry. Zach cast on the team of AFK. Zed pick is what is coming out for mid lane from AFK, along with the Gragas in the jungle. Now, yeah, Gragas is not a someone good one. we've seen in a while. 
Right, and he's he's been out of the out of the picks for a long time now. Uh, his hate, what was his heyday? Maybe two or three seasons ago. Uh, everybody yeah, left, throwing. right, over, under. Yeah, pick, picking Grog is top jungle, etc. But you haven't seen him in a long time. Zed is very scary. Again, if he gets behind, um, he doesn't present a lot of damage. However, uh, especially against the Sivir who was picked. And we're kind of falling behind here. But uh, Victor yeah. and Oriana banned out. Those are just mid-targeted bands. Uh, they're going to force him to play something probably like a Syndra is what they would hope. Echo is not a good lane for Zed, but he kind of wins it in the end. And then Lulu, Soraka, there's more support bands out. But the Sivir, I do like, uh, especially into Zed, because he, uh, if you time it right, you can't really ult a, a good Sivir. Um, it's a wasted ult on that, so... It's a good counter pick. The Echo, especially, you can go toe to toe with Zed, but if he gets ahead of you, it's kind of a losing lane. Yeah, of course. The Echo is also, I have to point out, a flex pick available for memes aside. I'm not quite sure if our resident top laner, uh, PK Dar, plays Echo, but uh, if he does, it would be uh, very, very useful as, as a flex pick, being able to uh, just bully down that Malphite in lane. And yeah. Keep him uh, I would say that's probably where he's going to go to. Echo's really good against tank laners uh, because of his passive procs. Of course. Um, but, I mean, he, like you were saying, he could go pretty much anywhere. Um, probably not going to go jungle because we see the Shivana, but he can go mid uh, against the Zed. Probably would have a better lane against Malphite there. But then there's the Shen. <laughs> there's a Shen pick, indeed. Yep. Locking in that Echo for the mid lane unless we see... You know, Battle of the Ninjas, Duel of the Ninjas, right here. Zed versus Shen. You know, for all those lore nerds out there. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that would be that wouldn't be uh, quite what we expect. All right, yeah. Throw yeah. kind of a wrench, and I happen to be one of those lore word uh, nerds too. Um, so I I know what you're going for with that. Uh, Shen is actually pretty strong. I would say that he could probably bully out Zed early. But after that, it would be. I imagine that that would be yeah. quite, quite the quite the spectacle to see a it shunted. Would. But then the last pick is the Alistar, which we were talking about when we thought he was banned. Very very strong, going to be very helpful against the Echo and the Shivana and the Shen uh, for the Peel, uh, for the Zaya. Uh, everyone else on their team is pretty much full engage or disengage with the Grog Assault. But um, memes aside,s team, I think. To me, right now, just based on the champions, their team is more of a current, uh, current patch, well rounded out team comp. And AFK's team uh, is actually very, very um, dive focused. I would say, quite so dive focused. Um, as a result, with all this dive, their damage um, is quite limited in the sense that you know they don't they they, they are lacking in that. Magic damage routes. Um, highly unlikely that they would play the AP Malphites or uh, an AP Gragas. Right. Yeah. Their their damage mix is is definitely leaning towards the uh, attack damage. The good news is Shivana usually off tank. Um, Shen step probably going to build full tank. A uh, little bit of damage. It'll be harder to crack him. Um, but, I mean, with the full AD, you're going to have some issues where they can just stack armor, thorn mail, uh, randoins, and it's going to be very, very difficult for Zed to pick off anybody except for Sivir or Rakan later in the game. But like I was saying, with the the spell shield with Sivir, it's going to be hard for him to even do that. So, yeah, a, lot, so. A, a lot, lot of the pressure lot of on Zaya uh, right now to just get out there. She's going to need to auto-attack as much as possible to cut through the front line and help with the, the back line as soon as possible. Yep. And yeah, it just goes to show how much um, AFK have to go through in order to take down any member of Meme Society. Shen with that uh, Twilight Sanctuary Echo with his Chrono Shift always being present, always ne never knowing uh, when he'll just reset all of your uh, all of your cooldown, all of your damage. Silver with the Spell Shield, Shivana. Uh, in this case, maybe even uh, Shivana might just be the squishiest member as she does not have a. <laughs> I'm reaching a little bit here, but she does not have one um, much mobility or you know, special to work with. Right, yeah, I know really what you're saying. Here. 
She doesn't. She doesn't really. Ha- yeah, she's unprotected, and her biggest protection, as far as I've seen, is damage output. That's that's a lot where her protection comes from. She can straight up duel people, uh, even later into the game, like a Zed or a Zaya. She's able to get onto them, but if she's not, uh, you're right in that she's not. She doesn't have much yeah. except for her dragon form uh, or dragon's descent to get out of there. And if she's already in it, uh, then she's yeah. She's she's committed to the fight. And you know what they say, you know, best defense is good offense. Yeah, exactly. And that will be uh that will be what Memes aside will be looking for to you know keep AFK down these um champions that um are very heavily dependent on snowballing, especially that Zed. And if the Echo can keep him down in lane, it will just take a huge amount of pressure off of the carries of Memes aside. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult for AFK in the later game if they get past, I'd say, maybe 20 minutes. Um, they have a lot of CC with the Alistar, the Malphite, the Gragas. Um, but then you're going against the Rakan, Shen, Taunt, um, Echo, if he lands his um, bubble and gets in there, that's a stun. But, I mean, they do have a lot of uh, defense. They have a lot of, you know, three tanks. Uh, essentially, and then on top of that, they have a lot of CC um, crowd control to kind of keep those oncoming threats away, like the Shivana and the Echo, uh, for Zaya to output that damage. Uh, I would say that their their comp is actually decent. They just needed a lot higher damage, probably ability power in the mid lane. But again, I've never seen uh, any of these players play. So as long as they get Ooh. ahead, anything's anything's possible. All right, we will see if. Um this team comp will work out for them, or if they might have to change something out, work out something for game two in case this does not work. So uh, you would, you would, uh, going into this game, your prediction would be memes aside? Right or... now, yes. All right. Yeah. I right would, now, yes. I All would right. definitely say memes aside. That would be my, my guess um, for this game. All right. And that what about guess... you? What do you got? What do you got? What I got? Yeah. Now, I would love to say memes aside, um, from from just the, you know, just the um, vacuum of this game alone, you you could take their, you know, their team comp and the the way they would play out in lane and team fights, and just use that as the basis for an argument that they will win. However, um, you said you haven't seen either of these teams play, in our standing so far afk is undefeated as of yet uh for this season of dominates they have they have looked very strong you know um with their team with their team play with uh how they execute and it is possible that even if they can't get the zed or zaya ahead they can just um overall win the game with great macro play yeah definitely true communication is a big thing in this game um that I mean, and that's the struggle of solo queue, as everybody knows. Uh, oh man, come to this dragon, you didn't come, we just got wiped. Oh man, go to this baron, you didn't come to the baron, we just got wiped. Type of situation. Oh no. Uh, if you death ball, as it were, before the other team, uh, you're gonna boost yourself ahead in gold, and uh, especially if you're able to kind of uh, read the pressure of the enemy and make sure that your your team is in correct place to respond. I think. Um, you're definitely going to win probably about 80% of the time, even if you have a lesser team comp, uh, just because of your pressure. And like you were saying, the macro game uh, is a huge, huge, huge thing in League of Legends. And uh, it can definitely, um, if they do, if they are that strong of a team, I could see why you would choose like uh, AFK in that situation. Yeah, exactly. Now, teams are. Loading into game soon. We still have about 45 seconds left on Spectre delay. However, nothing, uh, nothing doing. There is still quite a lot to talk about. Um, both these teams. I would have to say the featured matchup, featured lane matchup in this game will be that mid lane. It will, it will really make or break for either of these teams. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, the Zed, the Zed pick especially, uh, needs to get ahead. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw uh, Gragas hovering around uh, the mid lane there just to make sure that the Zed does get ahead um, and make and make sure that he gets going. Uh, because once you start doing that, I mean, they're both very roam heavy. 
mid laners, but if you can get the set ahead, he can make plays elsewhere on the map and really get the rest of the team going, which they need. Yeah, looking for that roam early from either of these mid laners to you know get that Malphi ahead early, get that Shen ahead early, especially in the top lane if one of those top laners. Honestly, quite a passive lane um, otherwise if, if there are no ganks happening. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Let's see here. Now, going a little off topic here, um, speaking of um, being very passive, um, the professional games that we have seen so far in LCS, LCK, LPO, where have you, have really spoken to that um, that amount of passiveness. You know, we see games going very long. Uh, not sure if they will be replicated here in our Dominate League, but... If the games do go that long, it will it will definitely look to be in memes side's favor. Right. Yeah. And it's you know, it's kind of to my dismay, um, on a personal note, in that uh I when they first started coming out with the new rune system and um the changes to the game, I thought the game was gonna be a lot more they, they were looking for a game that was esports able, you know, esports marketable. Um, cause the longer games, of course you get your great moments to talk about CLG back in, was it season three, um, uh, four, five, six, et cetera. Um, just those 60 minute games coming out. But the, the problem with 60 minute games is it takes a lot to watch them as much as it is to play them almost. You feel exhausted afterward, but, um, I thought they were going towards a much faster game, much more kills, much more excitement. Um, shorter games so you can get some more in the day but I mean it, as you say they're going a little bit longer nowadays so it's just maybe people are playing careful because they know how much power each side has now uh, so, regardless of the players I do have to interrupt you there because we are into the first game of this series in week 5 between AFK Afrika Freaks and MA memes aside now we have Revoke Existence versus PK Dar in the top lane Sean versus Zorxus in the jungle. Da Train Boy versus Monkey. The Monkey did it in the mid lane. Bobo the Monkey. More monkeys here. Uh, and Zach Cast in the bot lane versus Topher and Merle High Church in the bot lane. Yep. I mean, it's a pretty standard uh, start out for both teams as well. Uh, we Again, we need to keep a uh, an eye on the, uh, the Zed versus Echo matchup here. I would not be surprised actually if they brought the Alistar up for that gank as well, or maybe a level three um, roam just to get it, just that extra security and snowballing. Yep. And since these are pretty standard, um, pretty standard jungle routes, you know, we might not see anything happening for a small while, unless one of these teams believe they can really get their laner ahead with a confident gank. Yeah, um, passivity is the name of the game, especially when you're playing coordinated team play. Uh, it's not like solo queue in that regard. Usually higher CS. The games are going to be a, go typically a lot longer than regular solo queue games, um, but just because everybody's playing so carefully. Ooh, good little proc there from the monkey did it on to train boy getting that third hit of Z Drive Resonance. A little bit of poke. However has that teleport rather than ignites looking for to make map plays rather than um, pressure lane. The train point yep. goes back for a little bit of return damage, evening up the lane. Yep, which is, it is to be expected. Echo can kind of get in Zed's face early. Um, but again, it becomes, at level six, it kind of becomes one of those situations where both players have to be on their toes. As you can, you can echo ult, a Zed ult, um, but if you do it too early, you're taking Zed with you. Um, and it becomes a really awkward situation for you at that point. Alright. Seems like both sides have agreed to a little ceasefire. Everybody wanted to farm up a little bit. I want to talk about the um, talk about the builds here. You know, bot lane, uh, this build, very popular. We see every burn now from the lowest, the lowest depths of solo queue to the highest ranks of professional play where the AD carries go for that relic shield starts. Look for that overheal, that sustain on lane. 
Yeah, and the combination of rooms and the, runes and the relic shield is is Ooh, now we see definitely very interesting. Bots. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, I did not expect that coming. Topher went for the teleport on the Sivir. The only that way really that can really make sense to me is if she has um, the one that lets you sh that ability lets you switch switch um, on seal spellbook. Yes, yes. Uh, lets you switch out your summoner spells. Um, the teleport I actually we saw this earlier. Um, I forget what game it was, but they used the the spellbook to switch. Uh, they teleport early so you can be get back to lane as soon as possible in the early game, and then you switch to something like a barrier or a heal later in the game. Um, to protect yourself from like the diving Zed or you know the Gragas or what have you, give yourself the heal. Great. So now, as uh, as we were discussing um, this slight irregularity in summoner spells, there was a gank in the mid lane from Sean uh, for for Zed forced both the flash out of Monkey in order to save himself and the teleport into in order to save a CS score. Now the implications of Echo not having a, that flash up is huge, especially when nobody on a Freak of Freaks burned a summoner spell for that play. Yeah, definitely. It's that's pretty much the second best thing you can hope for in a gank is to blow summoner spells without any issue on your end. Um, I would look for a second gank on the Echo with no with no flash, and on top of that. Um, even burning that teleport, he's behind in CS again to the Zed, who's over him by five right now. Mm, I think so. And then again, looking into the bottom lane, the Sivir and Rakan versus the Zaya and Alistar. Zaya and Alistar are actually way better off here. The Alistar went Relic Shield as well, so they're getting the double procs on that. Uh, so yeah. Zaya is in effect. He's getting all of Alistar's CS. Zaya is currently up only about 150 gold, nothing nothing really to talk about. However, it will build up over the course of the game. Now, as we see Shivana is piling towards bot side, puts down Division Ward, use, also use that Sweeper um, plants over Dragon. Might be looking for that early Dragon. Um, benefits Shivana greatly and will really help their, their early pressure. Yeah, she's 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 better against dragons, uh, and the dragons, as a result, help her out. Uh, in regards to her ultimate, I do believe it's uh, her gives her greater resistances. Yeah, her passive and her ultimate. The passive bonus is doubled during her ultimate. The fury of dragonborn gives her bonus armor and magic resist for each dragon she takes. It's actually pretty interesting. She. Good. It's quite an interesting. Well, um, she is level four right here. Ooh. Fight coming in bot lane. However, Deathmark not blown for the train boy. Chrono, Chrono shift did have to be used by Monkey did it in case the Deathmark comes in. Always the, you know, the fear of a Zed executing you. <laughs> right. And there's nothing more embarrassing as an Echo than not using your ultimate when Echo. you thought that you might be able to squeeze it out and live. Quite so. Now. During that time, PK went in for, and he here he goes in now for another little bit of poke under Revoke Existence. Shins does have that lane advantage over Malphite, especially as Malphite cannot poke him down from range. With the when, you know, with the amounts of pressure that some of the other top laners can in the meta, such as you know Gangplank, Camille, anybody with that high damage in the early game. Yeah, and it's. It's definitely pretty rough for Malphite up there. Uh, he's he's pretty much in a farm lane right now for himself. Uh, the best place for him to go would be underneath the tower. And again, the Shen bullying. Oh, now here comes that Zek, that death mark. There is no Chrono Shift kill finished off easily using that ultimate from the Train Boy. And the Ignite's first blood goes to a Freak of Freaks. Yep, and that was just another one situation, one of those situations we were talking about. Once you get to post six, yeah, that was a great play by Freak of Freaks. You know, good use of punish. However, Merle High goes in with that grand entrance, uses the quickness. However, the play seemed to both teams seem to disengage themselves, not choosing to fight. Topher able to spell shield that first proc of the headbutts. However, the pulverize still hits him. 
Shen ults forced to be burned. Pikachu comes in, flashes in, misses the taunt on Zakas, however, hits it on the bow, Moki. Forces the Featherstorm, great. Uh, great snare from the Featherstorm, allows him to survive. Lorcus comes in with the ultimate, the flight of the dragon. Dragon's descent, however, was not close enough to reach with that knockback. And in the end, both teams back off. Uh, Sean comes in, looking for a counter gank. There is no ward currently in the bot side in the tri-bush for Ninja's side. So he's not spotted, but Ninja's side decides to back off anyways. And he just walked right through their pink ward at the top of his red buff there. Uh, that was actually a lot of commit from uh, Memes aside is the red team, correct? At the, since there are no kills um, as a result of that game, we have to discuss you know, the only things that were burned. Train Boy seems to be AFK in the mid lane. Um, Paz comes in a little bit late. He takes a little damage. Uh, two Two members of Afrika Freaks have disconnected. We will be back. Uh, we'll come back in a second with updating, and we will update you on the current status as to um, what has happened to Afrika Freaks. Now, since this is a pause, I want to take some time to discuss that playing the bot site. As a result of that, Topher and uh, Murrow Church, Murrow, both um, both supports on both sides had to burn both their summoner spells, but Zaya kept her heal while Sever kept her uh, flash. Now, I, I would like to say that in the end, um, his side came out over. Um, Africa Freaks in that trade of Summoner Spells? Uh, yes. No, I... I agree. Uh, yeah, you definitely still have the Flash on the Sivir there, which, again, helps out substantially if you're in a bad position against the Alistar, uh, especially Malphite ult uh, type situation. His teleport is down, but if you have a, if you have a Malphite teleport into your lane, you can Flash the ult. Um, just a lot of very extra mobility as opposed to the Zai just having the heal. If you're locked down, heal isn't really going to do much for you. My thing is the uh, Memes Aside team, they dedicated a lot to the bottom lane uh, with CS scores that don't necessarily reflect the aggressiveness that they showed. Uh, they're already losing. They tried to, they tried, tried, tried to get the Zai Alistar. And in the end, they failed, but they committed so much to it that now, even after that, Zaya is 87 CS over 70, Alistar 27 CS over 13. Uh, the bot, the bottom lane. The relic shield really come into use. Yeah, they didn't. They weren't able to stop anything, but they burned a lot, and that's got to hit the mom the momentum or the morale of memes aside a little bit in the gut, uh, just because they weren't able to get effectively a 4v2 to work out in their favor had it worked it would have been awesome for the team but it did not so you have to wonder what they're feeling like as a team now uh, especially during this pause yeah. speaking of the pause the game will resume in a couple seconds and we will see the aftermath of this little skirmish in mid lane like the train boy will have to back out to the poke he while being disconnected and yeah looking at the gold right now um you do see that that's Relic Show built, being built up, the, the gold lead, while both sides are 0-0, that 15 CS advantage plus 2 Relic Shows over 1 gives Bobo a 300 gold lead, about the same as a kill. It will be the same as him being 1-0 and oh up Topher, who is currently 0-0. Oh no. Now looking at, um, look at these lanes right now. It seems like both junglers aren't are, are afraid to make a play in any of the lanes, um, as if um, that incident bot, down bot would happen again and they'll end up uh, losing summer spells and burning cooldowns for no reward. Right, and that. 
what is actually no good here for our oh, did you finish uh, off Africa that Freaks the tower Howard. first. Yeah, I really stay a little bit too long. Rex comes out with a body slam flash, hits both of them, forcing that that stopwatch out of um, sever saves him for now. Monkey Dodo comes in with the teleport, gets some damage done, stuns three people with this parallel convergence. Comes back with a chrono shift, only hits one. The Alistair does no damage, hit, gets one hit on the Sean, does the phase rush, gets hit on phase rush. Can get this that Alistar of Z, appeal. Drive resonance, and as a result, Gragas lives through all of that focus from the Monkey Didits. Two for O oh in favor of Afrika Freaks. However, they do get the first turret. And in the end, gold comes back a little bit to even, but still an advantage of Freaka Freaks in that gold lead. It was absolutely nuts to see that peel on the echo from Zach Cass on the Alistar. Just couldn't touch him. He was getting lower and lower, barely, and it just could not get the last hit off. Meanwhile, you had Bobo and the Monkey. Uh, holding off the other two members of the bot lane, Topher and Merle High Church, there uh, to make sure that they didn't come in as they were both extremely low as well. So, uh, just well played overall by the bot lane there of uh, Africa Freaks. And then, of course, for uh, Sean to show up uh, when he did and effectively make the play for them. It's actually good pathing in from Sean because as they were taking the bottom side, speaking of bottom side, there. Memes aside are looking to get that dragon, and they do obtain that dragon, first dragon for Memes aside. However, the laning phase is coming to a close soon, so uh, it being an Ocean Drake will not be as impactful as it would be if said Drake was taken earlier. But look at that damage coming out from Monkey Dead, coming back from Train Boy, hits up with that death mark, finishes him off with that final little tick of the Ignite. However, Zorkus comes in with the flash and the dragon's ascent finishes off train boy. Now there is a little skirmish between the two junglers. Sean had the higher health pool at the beginning, but that damage, that incessant damage coming out from a Shabana with a finished blood razor, just the Gragas cannot compete with that with just a Cinder Hulk and and the, and the Gragas is forced to back off with Shabana <laughs> having pressure on the mid turret. And it actually looked like uh, for a second there. Sean thought that he might be able to duel the Shivana, but then uh, he walked up a bit too far and she smacked him in the face, so he took a little bit too much damage to stay and guard the tower. Ooh, Zakas looking to come in for the gank. However, does not have the damage follow up, so is still halfway down the river. Knocks Mirror High Church back with the headbutts, but he decides to go in anyways with that quickness and goes right back out for the exhaust onto Mirror High Cast. But he escapes with his feathers between his legs and nary a summer spell burned. You know, top lane is having their own little dance. This the top lane seems to be the battle of the wet fish. Yep. Both Everybody. both champions coming in with that ninja tabi just. Um, they seem to be having a little bit of fun there. Yeah, and the Ninja Tabby is definitely going to be, uh, of course, Malphite as a champion gets a lot more value out of the Ninja Tabby than Shen does. Oh, sure. uh, but but Shen, as um, as per this match, is going to get a lot of value out of it just because there's not a lot of ability power damage on uh, the Africa Freaks. And here, um, here we see a turning point in the game where that Zed... Like we said in the early game, he is getting that snowball in that he wanted, that um, that advantage over the Echo where he is able to just put out that pressure. As we talk about pressure, the pressure coming out from that cow, that one single headbutts, pulverize, forcing out the ultimate from Topher. Just shows exactly how cautious, how much respect they are giving to this, uh, this bot lane right now. Yeah, it's a major mismatch, it seems, just based on the stats down there at the in the bot lane. Zaya is at 145 CS, meanwhile, Sivir at the 120. Alistar almost, you know, is actually twice over Rakan, uh, despite his roaming. And in, all in all, this bot lane for the Africa Freaks is looking really good. The top lane is as even as it can get as they trade back and forth. Uh, I was actually surprised to see that the Malphite actually has his tower i mean it's been that low for a little bit now but it actually looks like they're going for something here 
Yeah, it looks like they might just want to take it on PK Dar and get that second, that their own first tower. But Robo Existence himself is out of mana and is unable to follow up with any damage. Oh, he's gonna overcommit and might be in some trouble. Might be a little bit too deep for his own thing. Gets a great body slam and drops that last low tick of Dragon's Ascent. So he is not able to carry himself completely over the wall. And in the end, uh, the noodle fight continues. <laughs> yeah. And so it does. But like I was saying right before uh, that little skirmish happened there, Malphite actually has had his tower low um, before they took the first tower down below uh, in bot lane. He was looking like he was a front runner for getting the first tower uh, for the memes aside team. Yeah, for sure. But it, but it ended up not working out in his favor there. It's just surprising because Shen, every time we look up, um, he gets that damage on now. its gate. Is it, yeah, every single time looks like he's bowling him down. Uh, but the CS is actually dead neck right now. Um, the only advantage that we have is, is BK has the uh, assist. Shivana is going for the object game, looking to get that Rift Herald. Uh, selling that Rift Herald right now would be great for... And there it is, it's done. Would be great to open up the map even more. Taking down that mid turret will be able to... Looks like uh, the Revokes revoke, revoke finish down yep. PK Dar. Our ultimate is not used, so we'll charge comes in right now. Finish that off with that Simon's Shard and Brutal Strikes. Just slapping slapping that Shen, showing him who is the king of the top lane right now. Shavana looking for the chase, and we'll finish it off with that phase rush from Monkey Did It, closing off the escape from for the Malphite, fight, especially with his flash and his ultimate down. Yeah, a very typical, very typical fashion line. here. MA is going up top. Uh, oh, in order might be looking to for go a kill here. Gets that proc from the Dust Blade of Dracula. Doesn't even need to stay as Topher leads to death from that death mark and ignites. Monkey to looking to fight down two people now, uh, He should be able to go ahead and clear that pretty easily. And they're going to, like I was going to say earlier, MA is going to go ahead and get this tower up top yeah. uh, off does, of the back of the, the kill. That's just it. Interesting. Like but I they, feel like they don't have enough pressure quite yet to get it done. They are confident in their ability to take it off. Headbutt. Paul Rice coming up for the Monkey Dead. However, he does have that Chrono Shift. Decides to use Flash, however, in, as a means of escape, as the Chrono Shift was simply bringing him back to where he started. Now, since the side lane turrets for Memes Aside, I'm sorry, for Afrika Freaks are taken down by Memes Aside. They're looking to converge in mid lane, use that Rift Herald, really just take down that outer ring and increase their, the region of the map in which they can control. And it's good, they need to start um, getting together here because the Zed, like we were talking about earlier, did get ahead. Um, we saw what he did to Topher on Sivir. Uh, there was a huge disparity in level there and it, he didn't even need to land uh, his second set of shurikens to make sure, um, or stay or auto attack extra to make sure after his death mark to hit take her down. Um, so it definitely will behoove uh, memes aside to group now, which it looks like they are doing, uh, and pr start putting pressure on this middle tower here. Looking to get a second Ocean Drake as well. It seems like this time Afrika Freaks will try to contest it. Teleport they have the Malphite the teleporting side. behind, yeah. Yeah. Or the dragon has completed great sparrow breaking up the Africa fix. However, they are grouped together for that Malphite. Three man ultimate coming down with the strike. Deathmark on the Topher. He will die for his uh, mistakes. The PK Dart ults. And, but there's nothing coming out of that. They are chasing on two members of Memes aside. The dragon train boy. So far ahead. Gets that last little bit of damage down. Chrono Shift misses. Monkey Dead does not have the damage, or does he? Gets the second part of the Time Winder coming in to finish off that Z Drive Residence, finishing off that Bow Monkey. In the end, a 3 for 3. And a second Ocean Drake for his side. Ooh, it seems like we're wow. still not done. A kill coming out for the Recon with that Gleaming Quill. He My saw God. the glint in his eye as he ran down there. He knew what he was doing. He knew that this, this will be his shining moment. It's time to shine. I actually made it and the, the the best thing that I've been noticing as well is memes aside despite uh, being down his kill and kill is actually up in gold uh, about a thousand Quite a so thousand gold coming and that's that turret advantage yeah at 20 at 20 minutes yeah a thousand gold isn't much um, but they're still up despite the kill discrepancy so it's very interesting these team fights are playing out very very equally so far 
Um, they played very well on both sides. And Sai I has think... Be careful uh, here. Rift Hero has almost timed out on uh, the Shaman. She has to use it pretty much now or never. Oh! Oh, and the pause comes in again. She needed a little extra thinking time for that one. Yeah, gotta decide whether to lay it down now or lay it down later. Exactly. There's no later. It's now or now. No disconnect coming in, so it might just be some hardware issues from one of the members of the teams. Of course, perfectly fine. We still have another 26 minutes of pause time to go, potentially. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not exactly sure on the rules since I am a new caster, and this actually, I had to dig a lot to find uh, mm. find this tournament um, uh, just to try and play in it originally. Uh, Resin uh, Esports, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, you only have so much pause time in a game before you're forced to surrender the game, correct? Uh, that, I believe, is correct. You are not allowed to pause for long then. I think you're not allowed to pause for this whole 10 minute span that is given to you. Now, yeah, when it comes to I pausing, think... we do have the Risen Wushi available to us, available to each player who wants to see it and the frequently asked questions. When it comes to pausing, you are only allowed 10 minutes per team and you're only allowed to pause three times per team. So at most, you, you can pause two minutes, three minutes and a five minute pause before you are simply not allowed to pause anymore, lest you break the rules and will have to forfeit set game. Now, and they are resuming. Um, seems they like we will not have to reach set limits. And I'm not quite sure who, uh, which team asked for the pause there. Seems like it was involved, anyways. Definitely difficult for us to keep track of, seeing as we're just in the spectator final here, but... And there you see it, the uh, Rift Hero popped the last second, finishing off that outer ring of turrets for Freak of Freaks. Memes side getting... beginning to obtain more map control. Now is it what just do you me, think? or does... Uh... Sorry, a little side note. Is it just me, or does that Pax Neo Sivir skin look a little weird when it walks? Yeah, I just saw that as well. She was kind of scooting across the map. Yeah. I have to wonder uh, about that, and here she is again, having that little, yeah. <laughs> low, low, low swag walk there. No. She's just really, it's a taunt, I think. She's just really, you know, happy to be on the rift, and she just can't, she can't hold it in, but she wants to know the enemy team to know that she's not taking it seriously. Quite so, showing the enemy team, you know, Pax Neo Sivir is the best server skin. <laughs> Not my personal right. opinion, by the way. In quality, in quality. and nobody crip walking, that. and rift walking indeed. <laughs> now, due to the uh, spectre mode, it does like to focus on where action is happening, even if said action will result in probably nothing. Yeah, which it is, is uh, what we just watched Malphite do to Shin, which is actually the tides have finally turned. The Malphite has built up enough resistance that he can fight the Shin without any nice. issue whatsoever. The right, adaptive so. helm. It looks like uh, Shin's actually going for a Titanic Hydra. Uh, it looks to be that way, you know. Titanic Hydra helps to finish up. Ooh, that Giants jump onto the Gragas. Hits the um, Blast Cone. Forces him back, however. Walks away as the rest of the Freaker Freaks comes in. Gets a three man boost from the Blue Collar. Rip Collar. Sorry, Blade Collar. And. And then the team fight still goes towards the side of the new side, being able to however that Malphite comes Ooh. in, jumping in with that two man unstoppable force, finished off that team fight, and this Shivana oh, barely walks away with that speed up from the burnouts, and I believe is able to just run away. Gets a red buff for her troubles, and then 4 for 4 for both teams. It was actually kind of upsetting and you know as an 80 carry main myself uh topher poor topher on that sivir just no chance the train boy goes in for the death mark on him flashes away uses the uh can't use the hill because heal it's down already and he he's in essence he died i i would say almost a full screen away from the fight and zed was able to just teleport right on back uh eventually getting killed by the uh 
the ultimate there, uh, the chrono break by the monkey did it after he did come back. But it's just, it's such a sad thing when a Zed gets as strong as Zeds can. Uh, as an AD carry, you really just don't stand a chance against that unless you have a great amount of peel, um, which in that case didn't happen. It was, it was a chase across half the screen and then Sivir exploded and Zed came back to the fight type of situation. Yep, quite so. And that that Zed currently is the one uh one shiny ray of hope for Africa Freaks. Well not to say the Malphites, however he does seem to arrive to team fights a little early. But it's up to that Zed, um to and both these uh, big team fights that we saw, this one and the last one, took out Topher early on. The server really wasn't able to do anything. Zero, four, and five so far, down fifty CS. Topher uh, seems to um it will take a lot for Topher to come back in this game. Yeah, he is, um, especially as a Sivir, uh, you typically pick Sivir just to, to have the extra utility in the game. Uh, she does get very, very strong uh, near the end game because of her ricochet, especially in team fights. And her ultimate, of course, provides the, the chase or disengage ability uh, to all of the, everybody in her immediate area. Uh, but against the Zed and... Uh, an Alistar has shown that you know he's very very wary of how the game plays out, uh, and the Malphite, and the Gragas. It's just it's a lot for her to deal with, and Oops. she's she's just not one of those those AD carries who is yeah, built. FC third Ocean Dragon coming out. Both teams seem to want a third Ocean Dragon. Or Ocean Dragon for a bonus side. However, Giant Rukol Blade Caller coming in into that two man. Uh, unstoppable force from Revoke Existence. Team fight is split up right now, but it seems like Moons of Sight are cleaning up on the side where they can. In the end, Shivana finished off the dragon, and here she comes charging back in, finished off the Alistair. Sivir bites up, bites up a little bit more, but she can shoot Blade Caller, keeps her in place while Monkey just blasts her with feathers, and now Revoke Existence is a little bit too deep. While he was yeah. able to just chase down Topher, um, I'm sorry, not over. Chase down. I believe PK Dar. The rest of the team converged on him, and Bo the monkey is the only one that comes out alive for Freak of Freaks. Yeah, right now the monkey did it. Uh, ironically, is pretty much the crux of our uh, memes aside team here. Uh, he's putting out a lot of damage, and uh, you have people like the Train Boy who originally was going in on Topher, uh, switched targets over to the monkey did it and over chase to the point where he, you know, he ended up falling for it. Um, and which in the end, give memes aside a very good uh, ability to, to kind of push back. However, Topher realized that he was severely outmatched there uh, when he tried to go head to head with uh, Bobo the monkey and found out that, that somehow Boomerang blades are not as sharp as feathers. Quite so. Especially since, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Sivir is still a short range AD carry, alright? Yes, uh, I think her range. It might be, I might be giving you outdated information here, so I'll double yeah, check. I'm but, going uh, off outdated information, so any information would be nice. I think 525 is still Simmer's range. And if that is so, then that Blade Caller really came in clutch for Bow Monkey now. He was up in health at the beginning, but, you know, keeping Sivir at that max range where Zaya is able to poke while Sivir is not, simply just makes a one way fight. Not, not quite fair at all. Would you say she had good auto spacing? I would say she had that good spacing, <laughs> you know, that little space between herself and those blades. And it's, they might have updated that. I remember Twisted Fate actually back in the day used to have a 525 attack uh, attack range as well, um, which th they upgraded, I do believe, to 550. I'm not sure if they upgraded everyone to 550, but I know Sivir has had a shorter range uh, than most champions. Now it seems like both teams are in a bit of a bit of a lull here deciding what they should do next. Um, and I think we, we should have an idea of what they do next now. I believe the the obvious next uh, next play for Freak of Freaks would to be will be to get another turret. Currently down word one turret to three. Only that top side and really lacks in that uh, map control around the jungle parts and the river of the side. Oh, it's a catch out here, Baron. Ooh, 
Now, Merotrich goes in with that quickness, um, seems to great flash and barrel combo coming out from Shen. However, two members, or one member of Meme's side flashes, and that will be Topher along with Dragon's Descent. And that pick onto the jungler seems to be enough for the, the Catalyst to start the Baron. However, the rest of Meme's um, the Priest, they're not giving up this Baron that easily going in. Uh, Stan, Stan United coming out, General Cadet coming out with that Crow Shift. Blade, Blade Caller coming out from uh, Monkey, Bone Monkey, Roots 2. However, a Breeze on here coming out from Monkey that takes away from any more poke coming out from. In the meantime, Sir Savannah finishes off that dragon and finishes off that Malphite that tried to steal a dragon. Malphite not having enough damage against. Um, Bar Did I say dragons? No, uh, Baron. Baron, yep. Yeah, have Shivana finishing off that Baron, but Malphite not being able to finish off that Dragon, as it seems. And that is not good news for Africa Freaks, uh, not oh, only of because not. of the Baron situation, uh, but Sivir and Shivana were fighting the Baron while the rest of the team fought yeah. the rest of Africa Freaks there. Uh, it was a 3v4 in effect, and they weren't able to win the fight or secure the Baron. Uh, you... At this point, Memes Aside has pulled ahead um, almost by 9,000 gold here, and they are two kills ahead, whereas before they were they were losing out on that side of the battle. Uh, you've got to be wondering exactly what Africa Freaks uh, might be thinking to do to try and uh, redeem themselves a little bit here. The mid tower is low. Um, they could take that for some free gold, but other than that, it's just really the strategy has to change for Africa Freaks here or else they're going to have some trouble, even if they can at this point change their strategy or if they're going to go ahead and head into the next game with a different set of champions because I feel like um, the the overstacked um, attack damage on Africa Freaks here is, is kind of biting them. Yeah, it's it's exactly as you said, you know, when it, um, we've hit that turning point where this sort of snowball comp isn't working anymore. They did not snowball head far enough. The armor is coming out for Meme Side, where, uh, as it seems, every single member of Meme Side has some sort of armor, has some sort of protection versus the Freak of Freaks. And with their current tools, and at this point in the game, they are they're not well equipped in order to close this one out. Uh, we yeah, do so see. I'm sorry well, about that. We. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, here's Did a question see? for you. Yeah. What do you think the win condition for Africa Freaks is right now? That's got to be a tough one, you know? Um, if, if this were maybe 10 minutes earlier in this game, I would say the win condition would be to pick someone out, but I don't even know if they were able to do that. As I say that, PK Dartists get picked out. Pop stats, guard well, stone plates, gets a little bit of extra help, however, might not be enough. The Greg is the only way the rest of PK Dart's team. He's all alone by himself versus three. Death. Mark comes out onto the Shen, but it does a minimal amount of damage as that Shen really has a high amount of armor, 207 right now. Sean coming in with that body sent on my head, only needs to close in. Oh, this is not Sanctuary. good at all. He's making it are alive. A great barrel breaks up the team up on the side. However, Monkey did it, finishes off Shen. Sean, three man ultimate, four man ultimate on solo force coming out for a but there is no follow up for the rest of the team, and his over confidence costs him as. His team drops around his feet. Bow Monkey once again, the only one to stay alive on the backside. I'm, to be honest, I'm right there with you. I have no idea. It wasn't a loaded question, I promise. Uh, I have no not. idea. Uh, no offense, Africa Freaks here, what their win condition is. Um, it just seems like the memes aside team has like overwhelmingly they, they kind of just yeah. even won this game right here. Murrow High Church was uh, keeping the AD carry bow monkey from backing once again keeping him from backing at this point. Sean will be, us up. will be Gragas will be coming up in time, but he will not be it. enough it's to stop be this, this damage and the GG's come out. First game goes over to memes aside. Memes aside. aside. Boom, right there. What did I win? Did I win anything for my Did you win anything? I'm sure. Did I win? <laughs> this is only game one. We'll we'll see later if uh Anybody That's true. Anything? That is very true. This is one game. It is the best of five. Best um, of three. So, oh, best of three. Oh my goodness! If these were best of fives, can you imagine that? It'd be forever. They would be forever. Is that? Uh, do they do that in the the finals? In the playoffs? Or... Um, yeah. I personally am not quite sure about that, but I believe 
I believe in the finals they do do that. Um, the rest of playoffs, you cannot quote me on this though. I'm not quite sure okay. what they do for rest of playoffs. Yeah. Uh, just a quick look here, actually, at the uh, the disparity here in gold, as I'm still on the uh, the screen here, the end game screen. Uh, Sean T009 on the Gragas, 9,500 gold. The low, the second lowest in the game, Zach Cast on the Alistar, 8,300. Everyone else in the game uh, above 11,000. Um, so they definitely have to find a way to get those players gold because gold is items and, and, and you know, items are the game. So we have to really figure out how to get those players some gold. And on top of that, I think we need to, to change up our team composition for Africa Freaks in order to overcome uh, this very balanced memes aside team. Yeah, quite so. Now... Soon we will be heading into game two, and what 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 do we what what do you think Africa Freaks are looking to change up here in order to come out on top and maybe bring this to game three? Um, so as far as their team play goes, I feel like they did really well. Um, of course they they were out CSing where they needed to do so. Um, in the end, their team fight was just not near as strong as memes aside was so i think they need to find a way to um to really punish over extended fights uh long fights for instance uh some because it seemed like a lot of the fights that we were watching lasted for you know 10 seconds plus as people just kept filing in from left and right uh, the mouth fight would teleport in finally come in old uh, etc uh they need i think they need to switch to something that's more um long-term disengage maybe kiting or um switch up maybe to a um, higher poke so that they can before they get into the fight uh they can just win probably a combination of both perhaps a combination of both now the silver uh, uh correction as well i just saw silver's range is actually 500 yep just 500 which makes it even harder for her to be in range of desire so I mean, as far as team comps go, as what I would change, I would change out the Gragas. Um, I would change out the Malphite for somebody. Um, just depending on who gets picked, you need something like a Lowy or um, something that can really get in the face of other people, present another damage threat. Uh, change out the Zed. We need somebody who the Zed did actually really well. His damage was fine, uh, but you need somebody who can consistently do a lot higher burst damage to multiple people at once. Yeah, that's um, true. We did see that Malphite go in with some great ultimates, two, three man or four man on some of forces. But um, as you said, the the damage is not there to follow up. Yep, and I think you can keep the Malphite as long as you. I mean, if you want to play Yasuo, <laughs> by all means, uh, that would be somebody who fit the bill. Especially you can go off the back of those huge Malphite ults um, that they were getting consistently. But I mean, Yasuo is such a finicky pick. And if you don't know how to play Yasuo, I definitely would not suggest it, especially in solo queue, if you're like gold-ish around my elo. Um, but, um, yeah, as far as that goes, I would try to switch over to a regular AP carry, somebody who can do a lot of damage to a lot of people at the same time, like a Xerath, um, would be good. And then uh, you can keep the mouth up. I would switch out the Gragas to somebody. Uh, a, a Sejuani might even work out uh, really well for them. I could work out someone to... Uh really start that uh, team fight that engage from a long distance yeah and i mean sejuani alistar already disruptive enough so you don't really need if you have a malphite in there as well um that's one very very disruptive team on top of that you have the Zareth who's hitting everybody with all their abilities and then you have the zion there as well i think that's a pretty good team comp uh keeps a lot of what they had uh, before Um, it seems like uh, I'll have to stop you there because we are starting the pick ban phase for AFK versus memes aside, Africa Freaks versus memes aside once again. Um, Looks like they forgot the draft. Yeah, quite so. <laughs> they uh, <laughs> seems like there was misclick there as well. No, um, no worries, however, as the Orn ban comes in with no problem. And here we see, um, so far, just pretty standard bands, same as last game, 
without a single change except in ban order and uh, just ban order really oh is there a new link i haven't gotten a new link uh it will be in the chat now uh same bans coming out from your side and afk save for one Africa Freaks does ban out that Shavana in that very last ban. Um, doesn't want to have to deal with such a huge damage set that is also quite tanky in her own respect. And we wait on the first pick from your site. It seems like it will be that cane. Yeah, the targeted ban that we saw uh, earlier against the cane. I'm actually really interested to see. Maybe this is why they went with... Um... Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Either way, I hate Kane, so I want to see him lose. So I'm Ooh. gonna go with AFK right now. Um, All right. It seems like our, our, uh, our one of our casters has already has his uh, prediction for this game. Yeah, I'm locking in. I'm locking yeah, it in. Locking it in. Looking for a win by AFK, taking down that Kane. Yep. Is a Maokai. That's a. I love Maokai. He he's great, especially after they changed him. Uh, he has a lot of outplayability, um, and his ultimate is just amazing for both engage and disengage uh, because it's almost like two lanes wide. Uh, so that is that is a good change up for them there. Um, we do see a, a pretty big change coming in um, this time. Even side will be the one picking the Zaya while AFK picks the Rakan. So same champions, same size of the map, but on different teams. Um, yeah. How do you think they will and, fare this time, considering their the different team comps that's around them? Especially I think that Ezreal and Blitzcrank. Yeah, Ezreal is another. Uh, people sleep on Ezreal ever, ever since they changed Clip uh, Clipto. But uh, if they even changed Clipto, I don't remember. Maybe they just banned uh, or not. They did. They, nerf, they did nerf Clipto a little bit. However, he is still quite powerful in his uh, own respect, as you do say. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They actually banned out the Zed. I don't. I don't think that was necessarily a needed ban. I think they're gonna change their entire comp out here, uh, especially with the Ezreal and the Shen ban coming in uh, against Muse side. Maybe, yep. maybe the top laner is looking for a slightly easier lane. And here, here, as you said, you know, the Sejuani might be what AFK is looking for, and Muse side preemptively bans that just in case. Oh, Warwick has to be picked. I love Warwick. See? See? AFK doing me right, all right? This is what I'm saying. The locked it in early. Right. Yep. Uh, the Blitzcrank, I love Blitzcrank as well. That kind of offsets the Kane pick. Uh, however, I had to see what the rest of their champions are going to be because Blitzcrank, uh, you don't want to grab a Maokai. You don't want to grab a Warwick. You don't want to grab a Khan, really. Um, he's running out of targets, really, to to grab here. Oh, yeah, they got the Nasus. That last pick. Ooh, Nasus. Now, I would love to talk about that. The top laner, uh, our very own PK Dar on memes aside, he has been raving about the Nasus recently. Um, has been try playing a lot of Nasus, I know, in solo queue. Really trying out those different builds. And um, it will be very exciting to see um, what he brings to the table after all that practice on the Nasus. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, all right. So right. my my piece about the Nasus here is uh, no you were right uh, my as far as uh, I mean I'm I'm sure you're right I mean to say but the Nasus uh, always very very strong um, the Z the Azir just talk about that real quick is a pretty common pick though that is pretty much filling in what I said they needed to do with the multiple targets because uh, Azir soldiers can get in there. And uh, he can ult multiple targets at the same time. It does a lot of damage, especially when he starts getting uh, the attack speed and more ability power. I think that's going to work out very, very well for them, especially with the Maokai Rakan. Uh, the Nasus, the problem with Nasus is you have to build them. You have to. There's no, um, I mean, you can get 1v1 kills and be good to go early on. Um, against the Maokai, probably not. You're going to be able to free farm against the Maokai, though. So you're going to be able to get the stacks up there. Whether the game is over before you get your stacks is another question. Um, but the Zoe, the Zoe pick, it's just gross. Zoe is... Zoe is just one of those champions that brings it out on people. She, yeah, she's just one of those champions. Uh, you get hit by sleep, or whether she misses it, doesn't matter. She's got four seconds before the next one comes up. Um, 
she can nuke down champions, hit that Ezreal, hit the Azir, hit the Rakan. Um, and the Blitzcrank pulls into a Zoe sleep. It's just going to be unrelenting. Quite so. Now, um, Nessus does offer them that, that uh, constant looming pressure. Um, with this comp, they can look to be do a 1-3-1 if Kane so chooses. Which, which could help match up against AFK. You know, AFK also able to do a 1-3-1 in their own sense. Yeah. Might be reaching a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But maybe. Now, I wouldn't now, um, I wouldn't necessarily Maokai, yeah. Okay, Maokai. I, I, would, I would love to sure. ask you. Okay, without without your own personal bias. Uh Okay. It's gonna be hard. Alright. Uh just just bear with me, you know, try a little bit. What 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 are you looking for? Um who do you predict will come out on top All right. in this game? Let's see. Let me think about it. Alright. Honestly, quick Matt's going through his head. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. You know that that scene from oh, sorry about that. That scene from A Beautiful Mind where he's drawing on the window, all the numbers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, quite sure. Happening. Our very own Rain Man here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, exactly. Um, I keep looking at AFK's team comp, and I just it screams to me that they're they have the better team comp this game. Um, I would swap out the Ezreal. For somebody more hyper carry, I'm oh, sorry, I'm gonna stop doing that. I promise. Um, somebody more hyper carry, um, mm -hmm. like the Zaya would have been great, the Vayne would have been great. Obviously, if these weren't banned, I'm just kind of spitballing here. But um, Ezreal is still a very strong pick, I think they'll be good to go with him. Uh, that would be the only thing I changed out about their comp, though. Um, as far as memes aside goes, hate Kane, but they're very, very aggressive in your face. The problem is um, there's a lot of tank on AFK side, and a bad grab by Blintzkrieg can ruin a team fight for him. Great However, a good grab by Blitzcrank on like an Azir um, or even the Ezreal, which is going to be difficult to do as well, um, could result in a winning team fight because AFK doesn't necessarily have the damage. They they have a lot of their damage on Ezreal and Azir here, and. Uh, Meanwhile, memes aside, it has the Zoe, the Zaya, the Kane, and the Nasus late game. It's um, so I guess overall, I would say AFK is going to uh, be able to win the mid, the mid game, late game, mid late game. But uh, memes aside, I think they can really get in there and punish early and the early mid game. Um, I guess it's just as soon as they can if they can take the nexus before 20 minutes they'd be good to go but otherwise afk i think is gonna get everything that they need to take down the memes aside all right so these are the predictions from uh hocus focus looking looking to see if afk is able to tie it up memes aside seems to be uh seems to want to try out what afk tried last time perhaps to a greater success perhaps to a lesser success Though there, there can't really be much of a lesser success than a loss. Right. Yeah. They could have forfeited, but that's still a loss. So. They could have forfeited. That's um, a worse loss, though. That is a worse loss because, uh, did you know, that's when it comes to the end of the end of the regular season, after everything is done and the mm -hmm. playoffs are about to start, in very, very rare cases, um, game time does contribute to uh, whether or not you get placed. Really? Yes. Um, so it goes by your overall score, of course. Then say overall score is the same. We go to head-to-head -head matchups and say head-to-head -head matchups is the same. Now this is where it, it, it rarely ever happens, if ever, I must mm -hmm. say. It will then go to how the games went, whether the victories were 2-0s, 2-1s, and say those are the same. This probably has never happened. Right. They will go into how the games went, you know, game length, um, whether they were able to drag losses out and whether they were able to close out wins quickly. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. But of course, wow. these are very rare cases and probably has never happened in the history of esports. Well, it's going to happen this season because we talked about it, right? It will happen this season. Exactly. That's what it's got to be. 
Awesome. All right, cool. I'm going to update my little page here. But, um, yep, so, I mean, as far as my my kind of prediction goes, I was kind of wishy-washy on it. I can see how both sides are going to win. I think AFK overall, uh, once they get beyond 20 minutes, are going to start kind of overtaking the map and, and tie it up 1-1. Uh, I can see how memes aside could pull it off and win um, just because their team is so damage heavy. Um, early game into the early mid game, they can really they can really lay down a lot of hurt and get a lot of objectives um, off of their team fights. Um, the problem is the Nasus. I think Memes Aside has a great really early team to do a lot of damage, like I was saying. But the Nasus is actually contrary to that entire comp. Uh, he needs to be up there stacking up, um, getting making sure that he has a stack so he's powerful. Um, but but you need to elongate the game for that to happen. And the the problem is AFK picked a comp that if you elongate the game, they're just gonna become stronger, tankier, um, and eventually overcome you just just based off of their front line alone. Um, so. I'm not sure about the Nasus pick here. Uh, I agree that he's strong, uh, especially in solo queue and team play. This is probably this is why Nasus isn't picked a lot. Um, I don't think I actually ever seen him picked, as far as the games that I've seen uh, in pro play. But um, I gotta give it to AFK again. That's my that's my final answer. It was my first answer. It's gonna be my final. Uh, what about you? What do you think? What do you think our win conditions are for these teams here? All right, so it seems like this Nasus. Um, if we want to. Think about worst case. This is just a uh, mispick. Somebody falling back on their comfort champions. Uh, maybe a little bit of extra confidence coming out from that first game win. Or best case scenario, he is able to, you know, utilize is that uh, contradictory pick very well as a safety net to fall back on towards late game. Uh, I would like to believe uh, that could happen because it could, it could just be. Um, I can't, I can't quite say underdog since they are coming into this. With the victory, with their tails up, but he is a dog. He is a dog. He is a dog champion. <laughs> All right, we are loading this game. We do see some of the some of the keystones taken by each of the champions. Now we have the pretty standard keystones, um, starring on the side of AFK Guardian for Rakan, Clotomancy for Ezreal, the Arcane Comet for Azir, Presti Attack for Warwick, and Aftershock for Meowkai. 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 Is he Meowkai? He is Meowkai. Nice. He will be tossing down those those little kins with great fervor and very little mercy. <laughs> That's good though. It's, it's probably one of the better skins in the entire game. What I'm looking at here is uh, poor Blitzcrank, right? Merle High Church picks the Blitzcrank. Uh, I love playing Blitzcrank myself. I love the skin that he's using. Problem is the Ezreal can get out of the grab. Yeah. Practically the all of these champions. Not so much. But the Warwick, you don't want to grab. The Maokai, you don't want to grab. The Rakan, you don't want to grab. And then you have the Ezreal, who you can't grab. So your only legitimate target here is an Ezreal who's E'd already. Or an Azir, who is probably going to be so far behind his front line you're not gonna be able to get to him at all um so we'll have to see exactly who he's like i was saying before the mid game early game grabs are gonna be substantial if they can get ahead based off that and snowball it's gonna be awesome their team's gonna do really well if not they're gonna have a lot of trouble setting up to win to win the game right for sure now However, in this early game, Buzzcrank, if he does get it in that one crucial hook, he is able to just throw a fight, throw the uh, a skirmish completely out of favor, in favor of the other side. And I think chances are most of the time he will be looking for that one. Uh, out. Oh, going for the disrupt here? They are going for disrupt with the hook. Oh, he got the smite off. Oh, that was... Oh, no, he did not use that smite. Um, Seems like a... Basic attack was buffered right as the hook came in. Or maybe the Q? Maybe the Q. Uh, whatever happened, Sean was able to get that level 2, get that blue buff, and Tover, Merle High Church, 
simply go to lane a little bit later and take poke for their troubles. Yeah, it's that was actually interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that interaction before. Of course, as a Blitzcrank BM player, I always do that um, to reset the buff just to get my jungler a little bit ahead of the, the enemy jungler there. Uh, it's interesting that it worked out like that. Did not, uh, did I hook it early? Did I hook it early enough? And no, in the end, didn't, didn't work out well. Yeah, I think the I think the initial issue was that he might have been trying to steal it uh, for himself, whereas I just kind of grab it to reset it uh, after a little bit of damage is on it. Of course, both very. It can work out. Both very. Um, both very viable ideas uh, to do. I almost think if you went spellbook, started with smite, and change it later. Now, just to steal it. Now that's quite interesting <laughs> because uh, not everybody knows this, but this week in um, I believe it was GPL. Have you heard about this? The uh -huh. uh, Gigabyte Marines a team that made it to Worlds last year mm -hmm. took a Smite and a Scion Orn bot lane. And really. Really, and they were able to use that Scion passive, uh, um, that huge damage after death, and a smite in order to just clear out the jungles really fast. That worked quite well. Speaking of working quite well, that rocket, rocket grab came in quite well, but Zach is not afraid of anything. Goes back in on his own terms, gets that double knockup, and that trade goes in favor of a freak of freaks. Yeah, it's just a bad mobility against somebody who, who really shines against immobile champions. Oh, we got a gank coming in the top lane here. Zorkus goes in with that shadow step, hits the blaze reach, hits the reaping slash. It still comes down for on revoke because just with that wither, just honestly not be able to walk away. Gets quite a lot of damage down, but no summoners are burned in the end. Hit him with the walk away move. Feels bad, man. See if didn't have to burn anything. Did not have to burn anything at all. As Which is good. Because the cane loses in that situation. Ooh. Now that is, um, now that, well, that is true. That is. <laughs> it's a little bit intense coming out there. Uh, Nasus gets a little bit more free time to farm out. Which is, of course, good for Nasus. Not so good for, um, Afrika Freaks, of course. Who's, and this Maokai, currently his one job is to keep Nasus down, keep us scaling. Uh, yeah, slow. which is actually, it, it's a good, it was a bad matchup for the Maokai into the Nasus. Uh, cause Maokai really can't keep Nasus from farming at all. Um, and so he's going to be able to get pretty much free stacks Speaking and of, remain full health like he is. Speaking of keeping from farming, um, while he is, uh, while he could try to keep the Nasus CS down, he will not be able to keep Nasus ambient go down as his Nasus started the ancient coin. Now, this Interesting. Is, um, this is a little bit of a personal story. I have queued with uh, this player before, uh, Mr. PKDAR, and even to him, this ancient coin build is quite new, but. Uh, he has said and he has uh, shown that in solo queue it has proven to be quite useful being able to get that early gold in from the bandits plus the ambient gold plus two gold for two seconds. Let's go grab bottom. Uh, yeah. However, he is able to just jump out with that battle trance. Honestly, if the Ezreal. Which, which is honestly uh, such good synergy from Africa Freaks because once Moral High Church grabs in the Rakan. As Rakan presents himself, since Ezreal will mostly stay in the back, farming. Mm -hmm. Blitzcrank's zone of control, the zone of control from this bot lane of Memes aside, becomes much, much smaller. As I say that, great grab from Moral Hydra, just get some free poke down on top. Oh, I've caught, caught him sleeping a little bit there. The E came out late, but still, it's such a a great distance between the E start and the E finish that you, if, if either champion does, like you were saying, dashes away to the other, you really just it might you might as well not even have grabbed them for anything but the damage Especially there. For Rakan. Yeah. If if Blitzcrank does get the grab on Rakan, Ezreal Ezreal has nothing to fear. He can just walk up into range for the battle trance for Rakan. Of course, landing with someone that is not side, the battle trance has a lower range. But um, he doesn't have to be afraid of anything, and Rakan can just dash out with with nary a scratch. Yeah, and where when it gets in, it gets interesting is when Blitzcrank gets to level six. Um, depending on how a Merle High Church uses his silences, um, I mean, and if they get to level six before 
uh, anybody on AFK does, but you know, it's tentative. But I mean, as long as he uses his silences appropriately, he can turn those picks into something a little more. Uh, however, uh, like I said, you do not want to grab a Rakan when he's level six because it's just going to be a free charm. It looks Ooh, like yeah, we got a Jokers nice comes in, gank. However, comes in straight from the back, which gives Maokai someone to twist the Vance on game, even close to turret. Once again, nothing used, but at this point, just he interesting is gank there. Switch. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication between uh, players here on uh, memes aside. Yeah, but poor gank as, um, however, Zorkis looks to come in again, but the flash is still up from the world resistance after all this time. He is level 6, so the ultimate is up. Ultimate is used, might have to flash out away, and he does so in order to escape out of range. We got a counter gank yeah. coming in now. Counter gank coming out, misses the infinite duress, jumps in. However, gets the Primal How, forces that Kane to walk away. You're, you're probably having a little, a little uh, dance to yourself. However, the dance is premature as the Kane is able to just walk away. Zoe comes oh, wow, away. aggressive. That's, I believe that was a chilling smite there coming out from the Zoe's, uh, Zoe Skull Thief. Uh, I think she used uh, Warwick's. Warwick's. Oh, no, he doesn't even yeah. have it. So maybe a, maybe a strange animation, but a great roam from the monkey did it, being able to just turn the and there there it is again with the Ezra being with a buffer that's arcane shift away from the hook. That would have been a great grab too, if it was any other champion. Oh my! Uh, here we see Zoe using a flash, not her flash, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would be, God forbid, as Zoe use her own flash. But that is, that is something interesting because the monkey actually did use his own flash in that gank top lane to be able to close yeah. the distance. And it was a very good heads up play by him as well. Uh, yep. If he hadn't have gone up, that play would have ended up pretty much null and void. But because he, he did roan up there, uh, he got a kill to secure. And then, of course, flash to get the second one. Ooh, this time, it's kind of coming in with that grab. Try to get the power fist, but uh, Ezreal dashed out first. There you go, there was the huge silence. Burst of damage from the static field. And Ezreal is now too low to fight. Had to burn both the heal and the flash in order to get out. No summoner's burn on the side of memes aside. That was really good on uh, Merle High Church's. Uh, in Merle High Church's regard, because he was able to tie up the Ezreal there. Uh, he couldn't E out. Ooh, this might end up in a kill here. Out. Tries to get the bow trance, but it was. Debuffered by the power fist. Topher looking just uh -oh. jump in with a flash feather storm, but might be a little bit too far for his own good. Sean just coming out, forces the forces the stopwatch out of the uh, Zaya. However, it will come up to know as two kills are taken, given over to Saito. Freak of Freaks punishing their overcompens from the side. This has and you have Kane in the top lane yet again. Yeah, this time there is no flash for the whole system tower is forced to use that features grasp as Kane comes in with that umbo trespass, gets some damage in, and finished off with that spirit fire. And this Nasus will start to get out of control very soon. That was definitely a good play uh, by memes aside in the top lane. Uh, again, they they just keep camping that Maokai to make yeah. sure he can't stay on par. They saw that work on the bot side, and they knew um, this would be a free gank unfortunately memes aside blew it big time on the bot lane where they over committed um but i think it all works out in the end you have you have two different sides of the map doing two different things uh, i think it's going to go pretty even in the end but the nasus uh... is getting pretty strong uh, as it is now because of the maokai pressure that's been put on by uh, kane here now so in the end, the trade, other than the kills, a two for one, was a outer turrets for new side, while there is an inferno drake for the side of AFK. AFK. Now, as you Let said, um, if if this game does go to late game, we will see the tide turn into AFK's favor, and definitely that inferno drake will come out even more. How about even more? Ooh. That rocket grab just missing by the tip of the feather on Rakan's cape. No play, no uh, trade was to be had for Mimu's side, and they're just taking that free poke from the edge of the ring. 
and it hurts in more ways than one too because you get the damage from it and then he gets a free mana okay. pot or free a free mana. bag of gold yeah, hey, for him. Ooh, Zork is just really ahead of Sean right now goes in for the invade does not get the blue buff and was feared up by that primal how might have just jumped too far gets hit up by the Infectorous and he really has jumped too far for his own good once again punished very for interesting play there uh, meantime as the camera moves up to up Zoe does get a kill on the backside onto uh, Bow Monkey off of a Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Unfortunate, you have to watch out for those. You uh, you can pretty much expect what's going to happen next once you get hit by one. So just wince a little bit. Clench your teeth and hope for the best. You close your eyes and when you open them, sometimes your screen just might be gray. Yeah. And you can't help it. Very true. Nothing now here we do. see something interesting. Um, in the post game, we saw that PK Dart went for the unsealed spellbook instead of the Kotomancy for his choice of uh, room. Now, while that does work out better in the late game, you know, being able to switch uh, uh, switch out summer spells for say a ghost or an ignite if he so needs it. I'm sorry, not ignite exhaust if he so needs it. It does right. um, it does interrupt his. Nailing a little bit, as you can see, his mana bar is really st uh, starting to go down, really having to rush and not, not able to poke onto the revoke his resistance as much as he would like. Um, in case he would just not have enough mana to stack up that cypher It's kind of kind of an interesting pick here. I'm, uh, I'm pretty interested to see what he does with it, what he turns it into later game. Uh, probably the ghost, like you were saying. Yeah, um, he, would he make the most sense. Um, a build of his own dimension, a movement speed masses. Uh, I've I have seen it. It works quite well. It's he turns into a Ramus for um, all intents and purposes. Um, there we go, another cane gank. There's no ghost so far, but it seems like he will not need it as the weather comes out. Nature drops comes out on a two force and that ultimate out of removal resistance and the flash as well. It's a little bit of heal back on that side. Magic is not enough. Sean comes in with that double primal howl, however, it might be a little bit too far. He used that as ult already, so he's now able to chase on Zorkus, and a final siphoning strike takes him down. I don't agree with the flash there from Warwick to try to get the cane. I don't know if he had any other idea, or sorry, any other possibility other than try to do that, but uh, um, he could have saved it for a different engage at a, at a later date, I think. He's going to be... At... Ooh, that quickness comes Interesting in engage here. Range. That was great back from Moro High, taking that uh, kind of out of range, however, Bow Monkey flashes in for that one final auto attack, finishes off that minimum of Zaya through that heal. Oh, and is the Zoe looking like for bot? Oh, in the bot side. Turn the hovering there. Now, PK Dar might be a little bit too far off for his own good, while Sean is up here, he does not have a ultimate or a, a smite, however, PK Dar is out of mana. And he isn't able to fight this as... Run right into stage. his ear here. Runs right into his ear. Gets hit by that. Nice device. delivery. Forced right back into the two, that waiting tree and that waiting wolf. Immediately back right bot here. How his works comes in the box and gets good damage onto both members with that AoE. And might finish up that bow with monkey. Does not have ultimate. So he might not be able to finish up Zatcast if, if his uh, granite just comes back in time. And it does. It seems like Memo High Church is not quite yet done though. As they may just push up that wave and look for a dive now in bot lane. However, members of Freaker Freaks are about We got down. the Warwick coming down for the they counter. Might have, might have been enough more than they can choose. That cast coming in for that bow. Great entrance. And Apple. Zoe is falling right behind Maokai here. I don't think he saw him until too late. The drowsy hiss. Let's see how much damage is done on the tank. Oh my goodness. That is a tank for you versus Zoe right now. It does not feel good to get hit by that combo for yeah. anyone. But again, we're still only at the 16 minute mark, so a lot of the mid game high damage is coming out before they build too much resistance up. Uh, they the, just go ahead and get got the go ahead tower there. Uh, the no pressure ring. whatsoever. I'm sorry, not the entire outer ring as the mid lane turret for Freak Freaks is up. Then all the top turrets are gone. It's three turrets to zero for the side of each side. Might be soon four turrets to zero. As PK Dart just gets that demolish and along with Siphon Strike, last hit goes to Zoe for some even more gold. And they're looking to get the Ocean Drake from bots at the backside of this too. Right now, the side are getting everything on the map. 
at this depth. They definitely need to find a way to uh, stop the bleeding here. AFK does, or else they're going to be in a very bad position. Uh, and they won't be able to make it to their little late game spike that I was talking about. Like, this is about the time that uh, MA is going to be able to do the most damage. Uh, you have a pretty strong Nasus. You have Kane, Zoe, who are really, really strong. Uh, you have Blitzcrank, who can pretty much grab anybody on their team as it is because the resistances haven't been built up yet. And then, of course, you have Zaya, who can just shred through everybody. Uh, right now is a really good point for our memes aside team to go in there, but we have a yeah, game going on top. And he's forced to use the ghost and the ultimates. However, that infinite duress misses a little thumbs the up. Game counter gate. That gang. Xerxes comes back, does not use the ultimate. Might be forced to pop it, does not need to pop it. Siphon Strike finishes him off, and they just continue hitting out the room. Because no mana, True Shot Barrage comes in for a little bit of damage, but Hope might be fighting off more than he can chew as he essence flux into the team. Gets a little bit of damage down as the Sand Soldiers finish off. Um, finishes off PK Dar. Monkey Dead comes off with the backside just as an instant deletion from that uh, Paddle Star. And Meme Sight looks to continue fighting the resources. That's a dead Ezreal. Looking to, that is a dead Ezreal. Gets hit by that drowsy. And that is a dead. A zero two gets hit by that rocket grab. Means yep, aside, not letting anybody zero. escape. And all the meanwhile, to add insult to injury, Zaya was pushing the entire time. Really losing nothing here on the map. Gets a, looking for a Rift Herald off the backside of this too. There will be no challenge as Freak of Freaks will not be able to get there in time. And while 7, 7k gold up. Here at 19 minutes, and the map just seems to belong to the side in every sense. Yep, and this is kind of what we were expecting here uh, the early game to the, the, the early mid game, like the first half of the mid game, uh, for this team to be very dominant because they are so damage heavy and they do have a lot of damage even on the tanks. But if they let the game continue to go 25 plus minutes, uh, I think we can see a really big shift in power, despite the 8k gold difference. Yeah, really, really seeing if Africa Freaks can just ride out that wave. That drowsy hits onto Warwick, blocked by Zakast, however, so while the damage from Power Star is there, the true damage from that Sleepy Trouble Bubble is nuts. So we can say there's a, there's a little bit of a net health gain. However, Sean is looking for getting onto PK Dark Horse in the flash out with the Primal Hall. Hits the Infinite Durst this time. Gets knocked up by the Grand Entrance, and all this time PK Dark still stays above 3 quarters health. Ooh, Ooh. and the Sleeping Bubble oh, hits from downtown, forcing that Warwick away. Takes a while, half his health with a single Palister. Battle Trance comes out with the Con, keeping the two members of the side away. Palister does not hit, but the Sleeping Trouble Bubble does. Merle High comes in with Static Fuel. Khan gets out with a bit of health, just a sliver of health, and the smoke does not hit. And neither does the blue collar, but the nature traps does hit. Zaya Ruta herself gets turned down by the Zir. Another power star comes out, misses, gets knocked back by the brown smash. Oh, Zoro's gonna be in a bad away. spot here. Malkai gets his W for some reason. Zorxus keeps on running, so finds out that he is just too far up for his own good. Meanwhile, PK Dart still pushing out the top lane. He did not lose much fight, lose much health in that first fight. He's looking to support his jungler here. That was actually a massive overcommit there by Memes Aside trying to get the kills a little bit too greedy there. They misplayed uh, quite a few occasions there. Ooh, uh, is, but the Nasus here is so strong, he is, might be able to just to watch in this there. This will be the turning points. My goodness. All right, tensions are high in the air. Will Zorx be able to get the Baron? Will, will it be finished off by... Freak of Freaks, Xerxes finishes off Warwick instead, but it gets finished off by himself by Ezreal, Monkey, uh, oh, Monkey just hitting in from the backside. Run the church and Peter trying to take down Rose, but that sad act just keeps him alive for the long duration. Meanwhile, all this time, they're taking damage from Baron, a uh, damage you do not want to take. Oh, Monkey gets <laughs> by the sleeping patrol of Bobo up. Back. A little bit of a weird uh, animation glitch there as Monkey did teleports into the wall. Uh oh, it, are we gonna see some executes here? Where well, we see some executes here is the question. It is close, however. Ooh, they are nice able to push out that Baron and Wow. Just what a elongated fight coming out from both sides. Just one thing leading to another. All that starting off from all that starting off from 
um, a freak of freaks looking for a small gank on the topside and ended up with a baron. Ended up with a baron from his side instead. Possibly the last thing that a freak of freaks is looking for. Yeah. And I mean, when it comes to that fight as well, uh, I think the biggest problem again was uh, you saw how low everybody got on each side despite the re engage there from uh, Africa Freaks to try to get the Baron um, and, uh, and eventually, you know, try to kill the Nasus and the Kane. Is that the Ezreal, despite being able to, to dodge a lot of things, just does not put out a lot of damage on the Nasus, um, right, who's become a huge issue now uh, for the Africa Freaks. Yeah, that's for sure. Ooh, that back it stops with that spirit fire from the Nasus. Oh, I church coming in for that little bit of uh, attack. It's a power fist, it's a mop with the static fuel as well. Has not used the grab yet, misses the grab when he does have it. The redemption coming in just a second too late and Ro existence taken down. Now this whole time Rito was summoned top lane and Lorxus just doing damage on this. And it seems like Freaker Freaks just just feel defeated right now. It seems like they don't they don't know what to do and are completely split up. Look at this um not uh, Rakan, this Kane just dancing circles around him, doing all the damage, gets yeah. finished off in the end, but buys him, his team a lot of time finishing off the inhibitor on the bot side. And the inhibitor on the top side as well. It was very difficult wide. to watch there because it doesn't seem like there's anything that Freaker Freaks can really do yeah. uh, to One stop Nexus this from happening. Down. He there does not want to stop here. Looks for a second necessary as his team fights the rest of Freaker Freaks. Now the Freaker Freaks might finally get a catch on the Topher, but the Sleep Control Roll hits onto the Maokai, keeping the Zaya alive for a moment longer. Topher is just too far away from the damage. The kite the Maokai all day long. It doesn't have to even use the Feather Storm. The Clear Color roots up the Maokai. Maokai roots up the Bloodscrank. Maokai finishes up the buzz crank, but now here comes the big boy Nasus. Looking with that one hit, taking down a third of the health of the train boy, forced to stream a shift back into his own tower. Oh, did it? Oh, the monkey gets hit up with that uh, sleep patrol bubble, executed with that power star, saw death in the face, and smiled. There you go. Being a bit more methodical, took out all the inhibitors finally. Yeah, finally. Looks like they're just passing their stats a little bit, patting their stats there a little bit, yeah. but. Another Drowsy coming out onto Azir. Gets hit even with Rakan's best efforts, and Trayboy might be a little bit too far up. Featherstorm comes up later, Color comes back in, finish off the Azir, and might finish off the Rakan as well. No, the Sleepy Trouble Bowl, which is a tad too short. Pops the cleanse just for style points or to get another summon spell. No, no, no. It's a little bit too far up. Use that. Portal jump and was able to get in range for that twist advance, shutting down that eights one and two. Is only now a two and two, but but is it too late? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say it's a bit too late. The rest the of is massive. Nasus is coming out, uh, coming in with that righteous glory, that talisman, such as that ghost, that's everything, just running straight down and finishing off Royal High Church basic attack. Last hit goes to Pigator and. A 2 0 victory to memes aside over freaking freaks. That memes aside, really, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm upset that the that the cane won, uh, but it ended up being that there was just too much damage in the early game. They got the snowball that they needed. They hit their win condition that I set for for them, and so they went ahead and and it looked like they they pretty easily won the game there. 11k uh, gold up by by all means. And but one interesting thing, Merrill High Lynch or High Church, sorry, uh, 7,900 gold, uh, despite being on the winning team on the Blitzcrank, uh, it's, it's a pretty big, uh, especially since uh, 8,100 gold goes to the Rakan, which is not that big of a difference, but when you're on the winning team and you have less gold uh, than the other support, you have to find going into the next game that you play a way for that support to get more money just so they can itemize and be on par with the rest of the team however memes aside really pulled it out they they hit everything they needed to do they showed that they could come back and play smart the way they needed to in order to win but they did still have their their errors in the game there so uh something they need to fix going into the next game they want to continue to play and um 
and win uh, is to make sure that they cut down on the less methodical stuff and keep doing it the way that they did it this uh this series here I yeah think this be uh this lost tarnishing their uh record but um here uh you're right uh, afk could now see that they have stuff to work on as a team uh low weakness is low achilles heel is showing and it's up to them if uh they're able to fix this or if this is the start of the end beginning of the end right right and and so they were the ones that were undefeated afk was hmm? AFK, afk was, was the undefeated. uh were, were the um team with the better record coming into this okay yeah i think it's just for i mean just as who i am you know the caster of the game i would the the, the really big problem i saw with uh in regards to um the play was just the the comps um once you start nailing down the comps there, uh, I'm not sure how many times Sean plays Warwick, but uh, he missed a lot of his ults there. Uh, some things that you actually you do you really need to hit, especially when you're on the you're on the losing side or you're beginning to lose. Yeah, one um, of those really crucial ults to hit. Yeah, the yeah. Zier there played you know played pretty well, um, but again, you could have gone with something even more even stronger than that, like a Zareth or to really you know set up so that your front line could go in the front and you could just throw out shots from behind i would have switched out the ezreal for something different um other than that i think the team comp more thought into the team comps go um to really create one solid one based on champs that everybody knows how to play and is strong with i think they'll do really well yeah all right so as we were saying, uh, as we close out this week five of dominates in Risen esports, memes aside, rising back up from the ashes, um, from a couple losses previously in the season, showing that they still have that confidence that um, that that's that spunk as a team to do what they do best, and you know, AFK looking to maybe. Maybe not make some decisions, no rash decisions, of course, but maybe, um, you know, showing that, showing that even the mighty can fall and, but it's up to them to get back up. Yep. Every, anything is possible in League of Legends. Everything so. is possible. Yeah. You can see, so, you can see the best teams in the world lose one game to the worst, worst team in the world. Not saying that's the case here, but, uh, you can see that happen one week and then the next week, the, the team that lost could win the whole championship you know it's just it's all about not necessarily what you do um when you're winning but you sometimes you have to lose to find out what you need to do to become the champion so um now that memes aside has that taste you know of a recent victory they can go ahead they can look at what they what they did right but they also need to look at what they you know didn't do necessarily too well and move forward with that learn from it and then now of course afk can look at oh well, we lost, you know, we lost the series. What do we do wrong? Um, and kind of move from there so they become even better than they were before. All right. All right. This has been a, this has been week five of the Dominates uh, Risen Esports. I have been uh, Eldwiss with my co-caster Hocus Focus and we wish you a good night. Have a good one.